Hey guys and welcome back to another video. So today's video is another update on how to edit in the style of Dylan Firsty. This is kind of more of the really nice moody dark kind of images. We did a video of this a few weeks back and a lot of people were like this isn't quite in his style. Um, that's because we edited a slightly different type of photo um, and a lot of people wanted to see how to edit his kind of animal photos like his picture of his eagles or hummingbirds that kind of stuff. So that's what we're going to be doing today. We're going to be editing a photo of a bird in the style of Dylan Thirsty. So this is kind of an update video. We've got lots more moody videos as well around on the channel if you want to go ahead and check those out as well. Before I dive into the video I do want to point out two things before we go any further. First off, we've currently got a huge giveaway running. Unfortunately, it's only for people in the US or the UK or um, Europe because of like worldwide shipping. We can't really get that sorted yet. But um, so if you're in the US or you're in Canada, Australia, I think we can do, and in like Europe, then there's a huge $10,000 giveaway. You get access to our online course, which teaches you exactly how to go ahead and use Lightroom as beginner to pro. So if you've never opened Lightroom before and you really want to kind of get into editing your photographs or that kind of stuff um, and become like one of your favorite influencers and because you want to edit really good photos on Lightroom, you've never really kind of know how to use the platform properly, then the course teaches you everything you need to know to take you through step by step, taking you from a complete bare bones beginner up to a professional um, Instagram influencer, editor, that kind of style. You can be really professional photos can come out of this course once you've learned all the stuff. So you get that for free in there. You also get access to all of our presets on the website, all of our Photoshop actions on the website. You also get access to one-on-one -on -one mentoring for myself and my brother. Um, you also get access to, I think, a Facebook group, loads of different stuff as well. And as well as that, in the giveaway, with all of that contained, we are also giving away a $1,000 voucher for Amazon and as well a DJI, I think, Inspired 2 as well. The link will be down below in the description, so do go ahead, check it out. All you have to do to enter is literally just type in your email, click submit, and then we'll contact the person who won, we'll just send them an email. So make sure it's an email you use either for like your YouTube, your Instagram, or your Facebook, or something like that, that we can actually get in contact with you. Don't use a spam email because if we don't get a reply, then we'll email the next person. So make sure you use an, um, an email you use for like your social medias or whatever. So make sure if you're in the US or in Europe, somewhere around there, go ahead, check out the entry now, put in your email and submit. I'm sorry guys, we can't do this worldwide. We will do another giveaway, I think, in the future where we can do this worldwide, but um, unfortunately we can't do that at the moment. Second thing is if you guys are interested in the course, I mentioned it just a minute ago, how to edit in Lightroom. You use the piece of software, it takes you from bare bones basic up to professional. It's a huge discount at the moment. Go ahead and check that out as well. The link will be down below in the description. Really, really useful course. You get access to a Facebook group. You also get access to like live calls from us. We'll give you one-on-one -on -one mentoring. We'll kind of talk to you, give you feedback on your photos, access to other people who are in the Facebook group, bouncing ideas with each other, giving you feedback, that kind of stuff. Teaches you everything you need to know from bare bones basics up to professional. You also get access to some of our presets and some free raw images that you can go ahead and hone your skills on and practice with. So do go ahead and check out that course as well. Huge amount of effort was put into making that, so I'm really sure a lot of you guys are going to love that. Without any further ado, guys, let's just jump straight into today's video. Okay, so this is Dylan First's account here. You guys probably know this already, but um, He's got a huge following, 1.2 million followers. So the kind of photos he posts, you guys probably know this already, but just a quick summary, these really dark and moody photos. So lots of his photos contain this really nice blue theme, lots of fade in there, huge amounts of contrast, really crushes those highlights, he hasn't really got any bright highlights, um, really darkens down those blacks, this kind of stuff here, really nice fade across the whole image, really soft looking images quite a good depth of field he takes with this photo so obviously if you're trying to take photos in his style then try and get a good depth of field also lots of atmospheric effects like mist and fog and stuff but obviously that depends on where and when you take your photo but yeah a lot of this blue green misty dark kind of photo so that is what we're going to be doing we're going to be trying to edit photos like that we're going to be editing a photo in the style of this particular photo here this really nice bald eagle i think it is Absolutely stunning photo. Love this one. As you see, it's got like nearly 100,000 likes on it. And here is my interpretation of it. Let me just put that in full screen so you guys can see it. So this is the final color grade that we're going to be aiming towards. So you can see that is very similar. Obviously, I can't get it exactly because it's not exactly the same photo, but it's a very similar color grade. We get these nice blues. We get this nice highlights here on the bird. Really soft, desaturated tones and a little bit of this green in the image as well that you can see in the background in the leaves here. So that's what we're going to be doing today, guys. This is the after image and this is the before image. So you can see before and after, before and after. Huge amount of color grading on this. So this is probably going to be quite a long video. We're going to go hugely, we're going to go into depth quite a bit, just kind of teaching you guys exactly how to do this. So 
before and after. If you do want to grab the presets for this, I will have our dark and moody preset pack down below. It's got all of this kind of stuff in it. So if you just want to click one button and get this edit, then go ahead and check that out as well. The link will be down below in the description. But anyway, let's just jump straight into editing this photo. So first off, let's just click reset. Okay, so this is the photo that we start off raw out the camera. Now, the first thing that I like to do is just put this into like a social media format, which is four by five aspect ratio. So just come up here, click four by five, drag that over the image nicely there. I like to keep the bird kind of foreground, like center rather, because obviously that's the main focus point of the image. Let's bring that back again. Okay, so now we've cropped it to four by five. What we want to do is we want to really start diving into the edit. So um, that's the preset there. So click that, that will apply it to it. But first thing we want to do is we want to focus on the basic panel. Okay, so what I've done is I've gone through and I've edited this photo beforehand. So we will be using kind of the previous settings that we did beforehand, but um, I will try and explain exactly why I'm making these certain adjustments. But if you want to know exactly how to use Lightroom, go ahead and check out the course. So the first thing we want to do is we really want to kind of get rid of these really bright highlights, brighten up, um, darken down the whole image. It's kind of a little bit too overexposed at the moment. So the first thing we're going to do is we're just going to grab the exposure and we're going to bring that down to about minus 2.5. Now all that's doing is just darkening down the image. Um, I just know that number works because I used it for the last when I edited this photo. But you essentially want to just bring down the darkness of the image or the, the lightness of the image. We're going to come to the contrast, come back there in a second. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to grab the highlights as well, which is going to bring those all the way down to minus 100 because we really don't want those bright white highlights in the background because if you look at Dylan Firsty's photos, he never has really bright white highlights. So that is achieved by completely removing it from the image like I've just done here. Next up with the shadows, we are going to bring those back up just to bring in a lot of detail back into the shadows here. So around plus 75, plus 80 would be quite a nice amount. So you can see you've already got a little bit more detail back in the shadows. Whites as well, we're going to bring those all the way down to minus 100. Again, that is just to get rid of those really harsh whites. We do not want those in the image. Okay, and then finally, we're going to bring the blacks up to about plus 80, 85 as well. That just really just brings back in that detail into the shadow. So I know you're looking at this at the moment and you think this is really quite a dark looking image. Now, of course, it is. We can see before and after you can see the difference. Like we've really got rid of these really bright highlights and we just crushed everything down and made it really quite dark. But his Instagram theme is very dark and moody. We will be using like ellipse tools and stuff later on the brush tool just to bring back some, some highlights in certain areas, but that's kind of the basic principle that we want to bring down those highlights and kind of darken down the whole image, but make sure we've got some detail still in the shadows. Okay, so next up, we're going to come down to the presence section of the basics panel, and we're going to add in a tiny bit of clarity, probably about plus eight, plus nine, not much, just to get the little bit of detail in those highlights and um, dark tones as well, because it just kind of helps bring some contrast into the image. Next up, come down to the vibrancy, and we're going to drop that down to about minus 30. Now, that is because if you look at his photos, they're really desaturated. We don't want super bright colors, otherwise it just kind of goes against his whole theme. Having said that, we are going to bring back in a little bit of saturation, just vibrancy down, saturation up a little bit, so bring the saturation up to about plus 10. Coming back to the contrast panel, we do want to add in a little bit of contrast as well. So we are going to add in about plus 15, just to really add in a little bit of contrast, but we didn't want to do that before we did these highlight shadows, whites and blacks, because obviously we can really control the contrast of those sliders as well. Okay, so that's the basic panel done, guys. I know I've kind of whistle stopped tore through that, but the general principle was bring down the highlights, bring down the whites, really crush those highlights, bring in some detail back into the shadows by pumping those up full to the right, and as well with the blacks, just kind of brings in the detail. Bring down the exposure as well, just kind of darkens down the image. We've got a lot of detail still in there, but just darken it hold down a bit. Okay, so if you want to know how to do the tone curve, that really does help kind of finish the whole image off. We're going to be coming to that later on at the end of the video, so stick around to the end of the video guys because that will kind of make or break the image, so that will be right at the end because I don't want to do that before I do the rest of it, so stick around to the end to make sure you learn how to use the tone curve properly. Next up, we're going to skip out the HSL sliders as well, so we'll be coming back to that in a minute. We're just going to come down to the split toning. Now, the split toning is really quite important, especially when editing in Dylan Firsty style, because what you can do is you can really achieve this nice blue-green look simply by applying a certain color to your highlights and to your shadows. So here we have control over the highlights and the shadows and the saturation of each one. So by looking at his images here, all of his images have this really nice bluey green shadow to it, like everywhere, every dark part of the image has this dark kind of blue, or in this case, a dark green. So that is how his whole theme is uniform. This is exactly what you want to do to make his, like make if you're going to be copying his theme or mimicking a moody style, this can really make the theme uniform. That is simply just by applying a certain color to the shadows and to the highlights. So let's just bring this back to our reference image. 
which is here. So as I said, we want a nice blue to the shadows. So if we hold down Option or Alt and drag our slider, it shows us exactly the color that we'll be applying to our shadows. So 227, I think is a really nice kind of blue. We don't want to go too far to the right because it's a bit more purple. And to the left, it's a bit too green for this particular image because we're basing it off this eagle here with the nice blue background. Now we're going to add in some saturation there as well. So we're going to go quite mad on that, we're just going to add in a saturation of 35. Now I know at the moment you're thinking that just looks really horrible and really blue, but of course this is, stick with me guys because this will, the, the image will build up as we go through. At the moment it looks a bit gross and a bit disgusting, but we need that blue in the shadows to really make this whole image work well. Very similar to the highlights guys, we do want a blue in there, but we're going to kind of go towards the kind of tealy aqua ice blues as opposed to the dark blue that we went for here. So around 200, 210 usually is a good, is a good shout for that. Okay, and now with this, the saturation, we're just going to put a saturation of 10. We don't want to be overblowing the whole image with blue because then we're just going to have an entire blue image. So we don't want to be doing that. Just those numbers work quite well, as in a little bit of blue to the shadows and the highlights. You can see if I turn that off and on, it really starts bringing in the blues to the shadows and especially the blues to the highlights as well. Okay, now we've done that, I think what we're going to do is we are also going to skip everything out and go down to the camera calibration. Now, the camera calibration is something that everyone says don't use or some people say do use like it's up to personal preference but for me you've got this there you might as well use it and really utilize how powerful the camera calibration can be so we are going to be using the camera calibration regardless of what everyone else says obviously this will depend on your image guys because it depends on your camera profiles and the exact image you're using and stuff so this isn't like a spoken gospel word what i'm about to these numbers i'm putting in but the general gist is for the camera calibration is have a play around because you there is no real way of knowing exactly what it's going to do to your image because it changes for literally every image you do and every camera you use especially when you download a raw file online somewhere you don't really know exactly kind of what they've been using and the, the profiles and stuff and all that stuff so essentially what i like to do is first of all let's like come to the green primary and slide it around usually if you bring it up to the right you can see we get immediately that really nice moody look it brings up these greens more to this bluey green um, and makes everything else a little bit kind of bluer if i bring it to the left can i get this more autumnal orangey green so we don't want that so we're going to bring that green primary up a bit so we only want to bring that to about 10 we don't want to overdo it too much and we are going to bring the saturation of this down a little bit because you know if we bring it up too much everything just starts getting a little bit out of hand so we can drop that to about minus 45 really just desaturate the whole image as well next up we're going to have a play around with the blue primary so again if you bring it to the left usually you find you get a bit more of an orange and teal effect bring it to the right and you get these really nice kind of bluey tealy greens i guess so we're going to be bringing it to the right as well because that kind of really helps achieve this look here in the leaves this kind of green look by bringing it up to the right so again about 20 i think and we're going to bring down the saturation of that as well to about minus 30 just dropping all the saturation to these down a little bit next up red primary just have a little bit of play around again bring it to the right makes this kind of more browny green and to the left gets that nice bluey green which is exactly what we're going to be going for guys so let's just drop that down to about minus 15. Um, now the reason why i'm not dropping it all the way down to minus 100 and stuff because we are going to come back to the hsl slider and kind of target those individual colors specifically so we kind of want to be doing a little bit down here we can always come back later on and adjust those numbers later next up let's come back to the hsl sliders okay so with the hues we're really not going to do very much apart from on the greens because the greens is kind of where this whole image is at at the moment we've kind of color graded everything so it's kind of blues and greens we've got rid of pretty much everything else so the greens we're going to whack those up to the right literally just to bring up these blues the, sorry bring some blues into the greens get this really nice color here in the leaves that can be achieved by bringing it up we're not going to bring it up to 100 let's just go for about 75. okay now that's all i'm going to do on the hues because as you can see we literally have nothing else left in the image because we've gone ahead and done the whole camera calibration split turning and all that fun stuff so next up we are going to come down to the saturation now the saturation will affect it slightly because there is still some of these yellows oranges and stuff in the image but they're very subtle and you can't really see them it's kind of a more subconscious thing when you look at the image so we will be dropping lots of saturations down just to kind of desaturate the whole image so with the oranges let's just drop that down to about minus 80. see as i said there's really not much in the image there um, again with the yellows let's just drop that down as well Greens, we are going to drop that down a little bit as well because if we brighten up, we get the green. And as I said, we want to be going for this kind of bluey, dark kind of image. So that can be achieved by dropping the saturation off, as you can see. Drop that down. Obviously, if I drop it down to minus 100, we just essentially get a flat image, which we don't want. We do want some of the greens in the background. So we're going to bring that only down to about minus 47, I think, maybe 50. That looks all right, I think. Um, aquas, yeah, drop those down. 
blues as well there are blues you see here in the sky and stuff but that's the wrong kind of blue so I want to be dropping those down as well let's just go for minus 60 as well and now with the purples and magentas I just like whacking these ones down to minus 100 especially for Dylan Firstie style because if you've got purples in there that's kind of taken away from the greens and the, the blues it really it bugs me my eyes just kind of get stressed out because I know there's something wrong with the image but I can't quite tell what and it's usually the purples or magentas or in some cases depend the image of the color grade you're doing so that's what we're going to be doing with the saturation next up is the luminance now with the reds you can see here we've got a little bit of brightness on the trees now what we want to do is if you look at his images he's got quite a bit of clarity quite a bit of contrast on these trees here especially in certain areas like this hummingbird here or this kingfisher because if you've darkened down the whole image you really want to make sure there are certain parts of the image that really stand out and are really quite bright that effect can be achieved quite well with the luminance panel so we're just going to whack that up why not let's bring it up to about plus 58 again with the oranges and the yellows that should be in the trees as well not too much on the oranges but definitely in the yellows in the leaves in the background so i like bringing it up to 100 as well just add a little bit more interest to the image you could bring up depending on personal preference but because we're going for a dark and moody kind of photo it really helps just to kind of drop those down a bit as well so let's just bring this down to about minus 40. Aquas are going to be left at zero, but we're going to add in some luminance to the blues just so we can brighten up the, the head of the feathers here and a little bit in the background just to add in, again, a little more contrast. So now that should be it, guys. I don't think we can do anything else to the HSL sliders. Let's just turn it off and on so you can see how targeted and how differently we can edit the image by using the HSL sliders. So let's just do a quick before and after. So a before and after so you can see how much editing we've managed to achieve on this image like usually people would look at this image straight out of the camera and really think there's nothing i can do to this image i can't salvage it i can't take anything out of this but as you can see already we've got something really quite cool out of it so next up i think we've just got the tone curve to do yep so tone curve what we're going to do is we're going to go back to our usual three point curve so put one here one in the middle and one on our highlights now usually we add in contrast and stuff but for this image okay so quick interlude guys if you are in the US or you are in Europe and you do want to enter this ten thousand dollar giveaway again go ahead drop your email down below in the um, in the submission box just click enter and you'll be submitted we will email you once you if you want and of course if you want to go ahead and check out the course that really teaches you exactly why I'm doing these certain adjustments here because I can't teach you everything in one video go ahead grab the course huge discount at the moment it will teach you exactly why I'm doing these certain adjustments to the point that you don't even need to watch my videos after you've taken this course so go ahead and grab that course guys okay so back to the tone curve what we're going to do is we're going to bring in the middle point here we're going to drag it up this just kind of adds in a lot of contrast to the image as you can see makes it look a bit funky we go too far so not going to do too much just bring it up a touch now what we're going to do is we are going to drop down the shadows a little bit again not too much and we're going to grab the blacks down here or the shadows and just bring them up now what that does is adds in a bit of fade into the image so I'm just going to kind of tweak around with these a little bit I am going to bring in a little bit more contrast these shadows I'm going to bring across a little bit okay so if I turn that off and turn that on you can see immediately that softens the whole image and it adds in the fade to the image so you can see here in all of his photos especially our reference photo here there's a lot of fade in the background so that's what we've just done you can see that we're now starting to get a very similar look to Dylan Firsty. I just remembered what we are going to do is add in a little bit of sharpening to the image and just by bringing that up a little bit, bring the radius to three, that just sharpens the bird's eyes a little bit and just a touch of noise reduction. That just simply smooths out the whole image. Not too much though because it will just lose a little bit of detail to the image. So, Okay, there we go. That is the basic color grade Good. done. I think we've done everything. Yep. Yep. Okay, so that's basically the whole color grade done. What is sometimes nice to do for Dylan Firsties is add in a bit of a vignette. So we're going to do that as well by bragging, by dropping that down to quite far to be fair, probably about minus 25, minus 26. And what that does is really darkens the corners of the images, brings your viewer's attention and your focus right to the center, which of course is the bird right at the center of the image. Okay, what we are going to do though is because we've darkened down the whole image and of course the bird is the centre of attention and now it's a little bit too dark, we're going to do some targeted editing using some of our advanced editing techniques and we're going to put an ellipse tool and brighten up the bird in the foreground. So drag an ellipse like this, just drag it over the bird. Um, we're just going to reset all of these numbers. Invert our mask, so it's just evading inside the, the ring here. Let's just bring up the exposure, I reckon, to about 0.45. Not too much, because we are going to do some different editing in a minute. So about 0.45, and we're going to bring up our highlights as well. 
just whack that up to about plus 80 plus 90 what that does is really just bring back those highlights on the bird's feathers and especially here um, on its body as well so you like bringing a lot of highlights back into the image as well just kind of draw your attention towards the bird okay so what we're going to do now is we're going to get our brush tool let's just reset all of our parameters here again and we're going to zoom into the bird um, and we're essentially going to do some targeted editing on the bird's face and what this is going to do for us is really just hone in to all the feathers around here and just brighten them up just and especially around the eye just really draw your attention towards exposure to about 0.1 maybe 1 0.9 something like 0.87 let's go for it and then we want to bring up the highlights to about 50 shadows and the whites just bring them all three of those up essentially that's just brightening the image up in the, the region that we're going to be selecting we are also going to bring the clarity up to about plus 20 as well maybe not that far. Now all that does is the highest, the whitest of the whites will make whiter, and the darkest of the darks will make darker. So it's in all my videos guys um, and what it does essentially just adds in a lot more contrast. So we are just going to be now brushing over the bird's feathers so we can either just do it like this and just kind of take guesswork and see where it's brushing but if you don't want to do that you can just click show selected mask overlay and it will show a little red blob of where you're brushing but personal preference I turn that off usually. Um, and we're just going to brush over the regions of the bird really that we kind of want to brighten up so these white bits on the beak especially these white feathers around the eyes just brighten these up just to draw the viewers attention towards it we don't want to be going too much over the black parts of the bird because then it'll look a little bit unreasonable that the bird is so bright but the background so dark so mainly want to focus on the bright parts of the bird like the feathers and we're going to brush a little bit around the eye as well just to brighten that up because really want to bring the viewers attention make it really quite crisp and sharp at this point so let's just brush over all these white regions here as well okay let's just click fit zoom out select done and see the difference that looks okay immediately guys you can see how amazing the difference is between using the brush tool and not using the brush tool so that is really quite important if you want to get a really good look to this image so again before and after guys I'm really impressed with how this is looking so far but we are not finished. So what we are going to do now is we're just going to come back onto the brush tool, create a new brush. Um, let's just reset these settings a little bit. And we're going to just brush over the bird here, just a little bit more exposure on these highlights, just really kind of just brightening up, very subtle, but just making sure the bird is brighter than the background, just make it stand out a little bit more. So these front feathers, I will actually bring up the highlights as well, because obviously there are more highlights on the bird that we want brightening up so again these feathers down here just really just have a play around guys just make sure you adjust the right parts of the bird just to brighten it up okay so that's kind of mostly the bird done what I do want to do is see if I can just brighten up this ring here around the bird's eyes so just click new I'm just going to whack the exposure up pretty high bring my brush size down really small and just brush in this ring here this ring of white that'll just hopefully really brighten it up make it look nice and crisp and make it stand out okay so let's just click fit zoom back out okay you can see that the eye is now really quite piercing which I really quite like in these photos finally what we're going to do is we are just going to brighten up the trees and the branches around the bird just to kind of add in this effect here that he has on the trees and the branches of the high clarity and the brightness there so new brush again just maybe bring it up just highlights shadows and the blacks we can always go back and adjust those in a minute let's zoom in increase our brush size and just brush around where the bird is standing especially on these re really highlight patches just to brighten up these sections and draw the viewers attention to it also creates a really nice effect you'll see when I zoom out what this is going to do to the bird, to the image it's going to make it look really quite nice so again these bits up here this branch at the back here. I might bring these the exposure down a little bit. I think it's a little bit too bright, but we'll do that when we zoom out just to see what it looks like. Okay, so now let's zoom out and click fit. Okay, so there we go. That's brightened up the tree, the branches around there. As I predicted, it is a little bit too bright, so let's just select our brush again and let's just drop that exposure down a little bit to about 0 0.5, 0 0.6. Okay, there we go, guys. That is pretty much done. Um, what I'm going to do is just really show you what the effect is of removing these brushes now. So if I click delete on the face, you see how much that darkens down the face there. Um, 
this is the bird, the feathers, delete that, really darkens down the feathers, and then finally the tree branches, delete that, bring back the brightness, change your mind, let's bring that to about 0.8. Okay, there we go guys, that is pretty much the video done. One final thing we can do is grab the graduated filter, drop that exposure down to about minus 1.6, drop down everything else to zero, and just darken off the bottom corners and the top corners of the image. I know we did this with the um, vignetting tool as well, but it's always nice just to do some targeted vignetting with the graduated filter. Okay, let's click done, fit, put that in full screen so you guys can see that. Now there we go guys, that is the final color grade of the image. I really like how that turned out. I really hope you guys preferred this one to the previous video <laughs> and you guys, um, and I really hope you guys now know how to edit Dylan Firsty's kind of photos. So before and after, before and after. So if you do want to grab the preset pack for this guys, it's our Dark and Moody preset pack. This exact um, preset will be in the pack, so go ahead and check that out. The link will be down below in the description. Of course, if you are in the US and you are in the UK or Europe or whatever, and you want to be part of the giveaway, go ahead, enter in your email on the link below. And of course, if you're anywhere in the world and you want to get access to our course, huge amount of discount at the moment, go ahead and check that out as well. So thanks for watching guys. I really hope you enjoyed this edit. We'll see you guys in the next one.